up guys, I'm Bradley Dillon here at State Theater in Florida for the new Fury.com and introduce yourself to the promotion page. Uh, we're here with some friends of mine today, actually rather one friend, uh, so let me introduce yourself to what <laughs> band you play. What's up guys, I'm Chachi, I'm the drummer of Pop Evil. Alright, now the first question for you, you guys just released your new album Onyx and uh, I was actually tracking Billboard 200, it charted really well, it was like in the 30s or 40s, I forget sold over 10,000 copies. Did the, do, did the album do better in your first week's sales than you thought it would? Uh, I mean, we had high expectations. It did well, and we were definitely excited, and, and it took a second to put our, you know, kind of pat ourselves in the back, but we're pretty competitive, and we set the bar pretty high, and uh, we're just, we're never really, we're never content with anything that we do, you know? Uh, no one's disappointed with what we did, and, you know, for rock music especially, that's great. So to see ourselves in the Billboard Top 40 is pretty rad. But uh, we want to still keep working and still keep climbing. Hey, um, so you mentioned you know still keep climbing. This is uh, it's your it's your uh, obviously your new record. You know, selling ten thousand copies is a big deal in this day and age. How do you think you were able to with the help your record label sell so many copies of Onyx? I don't know. You know, I mean, uh, there was a lot of hype, and for the first time in our career, the label us, everyone was kind of on the same page, management and uh, promotion was set up, and it, it's kind of up to the label to make an investment, you know, like, artist development doesn't really exist anymore, people don't really spend money on new bands, and we're not really new anymore, but, you know, comparatively, comparatively to, like, bands like Avenged Sevenfold or Shine Down or Five Finger Death Punch, we are still very new, so, they took a risk and they, you know, fronted, you know, the promotion and the, put in the hard work, and they trusted the songs, so we put the songs out, and it, it, it seems to be working out so far. So, so um, obviously, you know, sales for Onyx are really high. What about some of the reviews? You know, who have you gotten uh, really good reviews from any major publications? We've done really well. Uh, I don't have anything on me. I know that uh, our PR guy has forwarded me some, some notes from uh, various... The thing with reviews is everyone has one, you know? I mean, and I get excited about the good ones, and you try not to get upset about the bad ones. But uh, it, in, the, all, in the end, it's just a review, you know. And review guys, I mean, the truth is they're probably not going to go buy our album. Like, I want to know what the fans think. And it seems to me that the fans are happy. We're selling copies, which must mean that somebody's enjoying it and talking about it. And to me, that's what matters. I don't really care if it gets one or 15 stars. I want people to buy and enjoy the record. I'm not going to tell anybody it's the best record ever made. It's the best record we made. Buy it yourself. Tell me what you think. All I want is a chance. All right, so while you've been on this tour, Seven Deaths, you know, uh, you probably do a lot of meet and greets with the fans, right? Um, what have fans said about the new record? Uh, have you gotten, you know, good response? We've gotten a phenomenal response. Uh, we It seems so far that, you know, the majority of everyone that's always been there for us is still enjoying the new sound. And we've had a lot, of, I mean, one of the greatest feelings is a lot of people have come up to us that have seen us on this tour or bought the new record and gave it a chance have been like open to us and said, listen, we, we talked a lot of crap about your band. We didn't like your band. The only songs we knew were these, you know, like our pussy ballads that were on the radio and we never gave you a chance and we saw, they saw us live or they bought the record and we're earning their respect and that's what matters to me. You know, too many people hear one song or read the band name and it has the word pop in it so they're like, they don't even give us a chance. They just blacklist us. And we're here to prove that, you know, it's, we're here, we can play music, man. We're here to throw down a live show and be out there with the guys in Seven Dust. It's been a great run. We've done really well, and uh, we're just happy to be out here with them and them supporting, you know, their new album, Black Out the Sun's Killer. So it's been a good time with two bands with two great albums out right now. All right. Uh, now, I, was, uh, um, I actually didn't know this before, but you have a bunch of cool tattoos. Uh, I'm a tattoo <laughs> fan of myself, even though I don't have one. Um, so are you a big fan of, uh, you know, games from like 80s, 90s, stuff like that? Or what did you grow up playing? I am. This is the, the right, my right arm is kind of, uh, you know, the beginnings of paying homage to just my childhood and growing up. Uh, cartoons, video games, uh, my right leg, I'm going to eventually start with books, uh, characters and covers. Uh, kind of my, well, you know, I don't take anything super serious, so a lot of guys get like really like tough for like, you know, like deep tattoos, and I'm like, when I was little, man, I really liked playing Mega Man. I like Kirby because he eats everything. You know, Stitch is like my favorite cartoon. Uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 is like one of my favorite video games. Mega Man. Uh, it's just what I was into when I was young, and like remembrance that don't take life too seriously and just enjoy the little things. Yeah. 
All right. Um, now, I guess you, you got like I said, you got Mario, Mega Man there. Um, what's your favorite Mario game of all time? The any system? Any I favorite? think Super Mario Brothers Three is probably my favorite. Tanuki Super Mario is pretty untouchable. I mean, the dude can fly. He can turn into a statue. I'm totally making myself sound like a nerd, but it's legit. I mean, he's a badass. What are you gonna do about it? <laughs> so I, I oh, uh. Black, I, yeah, Black Ops 2, I, I don't play a lot of first person shoes myself, but I guess, uh, you guys, are you guys pretty big gamers on the road? What are you guys playing right now? We're not, like, huge gamers, but we have time to kill. So, the two games right now living in the system are Call of Duty Black Ops and uh, NHL. Uh, years vary by whatever, you know, we have available or whatever newest or most relevant, but we play a lot of hockey. Um, also, in the back of the bus, we have a Wii, and, like, Mario Kart is a serious competition. It's always four players of all band people or crew. And uh, and when you do it on popular bus it's called a Don. Like we call it a Megalodon. I don't know how the name really originated, honestly, but when you play, you play all of the cups. And like so to win, you have to win the majority of all I believe it's eight cups total. So you have to win the majority of the four people. So like, if you say, I'm gonna go race the Pop Evil in Mario Kart, you might as well plan on investing like the next hour and a half to two hours in your, of your life racing. So I, I love Mario Kart, but I'm way too ADD to like play Mario Kart for two hours straight. I get really bored, but NHL, uh, we have Madden and Black Ops, Zombies is pretty, pretty hot commodity on the bus. All right, um, but now you mentioned hockey and a Stanley Cup playoffs are going on big right now. Uh, Blackhawks won game five last night. Game five? Yeah. yeah. Stay alive. Um, so, uh, who do you see in the finals? Because the Penguins and Bruins are now in the East. Who do you uh, play I mean, that's going to sound biased because of the band, but obviously I want to see the Wings go. Man, I'm a huge Red Wings fan, uh, and we're probably the weakest team in the Western Conference Finals, but we're the Red Wings, and it's postseason, so nothing matters anymore. Blackhawks are a great team. Eastern Conference, uh, like our guitar player Nick is from Pittsburgh. And the Penguins are insanely good. They should have no problem getting the finals. I wouldn't mind watching a you know a Detroit uh, Penguins rematch. We're younger, they're more experienced, they're a better hockey team, but we're hungry. We have a good leader. Anything can happen. You know, I don't know. I would love to see Wings and Penguins in the finals. That'd be awesome. All right. Um, so, what's your? Do you have a favorite uh, sports memory that you had? Uh, you know, growing up or even recently? Man, that's tough. Uh, one that stands out, probably just because we're talking about hockey, so spur of the moment, is uh, when the Avalanche and the Red Wings were like huge rivalries and the Patrick Watt, Chris Osgood center ice throwdowns. When you watch like the goalies skate out and pound each other's faces, uh, that was pretty awesome. I guess that's, at least right now, that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking of immediately. Hey, now, uh, back to, you know, more about your uh, music video album. So, your music video for Trenches, which is, like, blowing up, that's how I, uh, that's actually the first song I heard from you guys. Right. Um, you filmed the music video for that in Sweden. What was it, or, what was it like, you know, flying over there, filming it? How long did it take to finish? Was there a concept behind it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was a long flight. That was brutal. But, uh... We we basically shot three three videos in uh, like ten days, and they were all they're all conceptually bound. It's a trilogy, and Trenches is actually part three of the trilogy. So the other two videos are also uh, in the editing process, or I think believe I believe the second one's almost done. Um, anytime, uh, which we haven't released which songs are for yet, but they are all stemmed with the same story. If you watch the video, there's a girl in it who is kind of reflecting on her dark past and you know training to kind of like stand up for herself and you know. It's very thematic to the song, standing up and getting out of the trenches and fighting for what she believes in. And she's kind of the central character throughout the three trilo uh, the trilogy of the videos. Uh, it's also probably the rawest video. Like, it's just pretty much us jamming live and the girl training. There's definitely some serious surprises and special effects and cool stuff in store for the next videos, but I don't want to release too much. But it's going to be a trilogy of three videos that I think I'm, re I'm really excited about. All right, so, you know, being on tour, Seven Dust, and being the uh, second last fan that's playing, you know, um, what's your set list looking like? How, and how do you go about choosing a set list? Right? <laughs> One thing about us that's cool is we're pretty diverse, you know, and some people hate us for that, some people love us. Uh, we kind of go all over with our songs, but that makes us capable of touring with bands like Three of a Dead Man, Three Doors Down, and we definitely change our set when we're out with, like, Seven Dust. So, uh, right now, we're all excited about the new album. I think we have uh, about a nine-song set. And I think that like five of the songs are off the new album. So it's predominantly uh, heavy and it's very new, which 
we love because, let's be honest, you, know, you, you get bored playing the same songs. Um, but we're still trying to play some of the hits that fans know and love when they come to see us. Um, but the new songs been going over great. Uh, there's a, just there's a really cool excitement going on. I don't know how to explain it. Like songs off the old album that became singles before they were singles weren't necessarily amazing live songs. Once people are familiar with them, they go over great. The new record we have songs that people have never heard, but they're already like some of our strongest live songs. And uh, that's really exciting to think about the potential of what if this song was a single? What could it do then? Um, I mean, Trenches is super fun to play live. Obviously, that's going to say I'm not going to try to sandbag anybody on that. They're going single, definitely in the set list. But there's some old, some new, uh, a lot of new, and, and, and heavy. It's fun, man. It's upbeat, and we do our best about there and hang with seven of us, who I consider to be one of the best live bands out there. Those guys throw down, and we love and respect them. All right, um, so, you know, Seven Dust, obviously, you know, the big draw to this tour. It means you guys are going to gain some new fans. Do you have a favorite Seven Dust album? Ooh, that's tough, man. Album. Uh, and, yeah, Animosity is pretty insane. I really like the new album, though. Blackout the Sun's good. It hasn't been around as long. Uh... I don't know if I could pick a favorite album. I guess I'm going to have to take the cop out and say I'm going to have to pick one. But that's... That's really tough to pick. If anybody debated that, I'd be a very... I would back down very quickly, probably. They just have, they have a lot of good songs. Cool band. Uh, I have one last question for you. know, you guys uh, do 100, 150, 200 shows here at Red, you know? Um, you got anything you can tell fans who are touring for the first time that uh, would really help them survive the first tour? If this sounds, I mean, usually, I, you know, two things I'm pretty notorious for in my social networking is like, I tell people to dream it possible, and I tell people don't wish for it, work for it. But when people ask me what to tell new bands, if I have a piece of advice, my number one piece of advice is to give up and quit, and then I wait, and if anybody even considered quitting after I just told you that, then you should get out of business, because... You're going to be walked on, spit on, stomped on. You're going to get love. I mean, of course you're going to get lovers. But, like, there's going to be haters out there. And if you don't have thick skin, it's going to be a really long road. But if it's something that you really love and you really believe in, it's all worth it, man. I mean, you're on the road with some of your best friends. You're getting paid probably very little. You know, we know about that. You're getting some monetary exchange to, I mean, to, drive, to see the world and, like, play music that you made. So... Keep at it, man. Don't quit. It's a really long road. If you love it, you'll stay with it. It's like anything else in life. If you love it, you'll fight for it. Alright, well, I think that about wraps things up for anyway, because you guys have a meet and greet. Me to go to. I was uh, keeping that in the back of my mind. <laughs> but um, be sure to check out this interview and more on the newfury.com and introduce yourself fan promotion page. Again, this has been Bradley and. Stachi, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out Seven Dust and Pop Evil and the new album Onyx on Tour now.